Hi everyone, Finbar here, Unisphere PM. Um, today, in today's example, I just wanted to show you how to provision storage to a host. Um, so I'm on Unisphere 8.4 and I want to provision storage to a new host that I'm setting up. So I'm on the storage group dashboard here, as we can see. I just want to go click on manage and provision storage. So this brings up the following screen. So I'm creating a new storage group for the Oracle Finance team. So let's just give it that identifier. Storage resource pool and the SRP. So we only have one SRP on this box. Uh, it's an all flash array. Again, that would indicate we have only one service level being all flash. So diamond is perfectly okay there. Workload type, um, it's online transaction processing and replication. So I want to pick that, so small I.O. workload, similar to OLTP with local remote rep. So it's going to be backed up with SNAP and RDF also. Um, I just want to put two volumes in it. And for this, this example, I'm just going to have 10 gigabyte volumes. If you wanted to add additional storage groups in one step, so if you were creating more than one for more than one application owner, you can do it here. I won't do it in this example. Um, Set high host IO limits. Um, we don't want to go near that for this particular one. And compression is turned on automatically. Uh, you can see the average response time here is also 2.3 milliseconds uh, guaranteed on a diamond service level. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to create a new host. And we'll just keep the naming convention in place. Initiators. And next again. So select port group, we have the choice of using a new or existing port group. Um, that's our Oracle Finance underscore two underscore port group. That's our naming convention here. And I also want to include ports not visible to the host. So it's going down one dog eight. So I want to put it down uh, two dog eight also, just to ensure that we have uh, two paths going on to the uh, storage. Click next. And this is the final screen. Uh, so Oracle Finance 2 masking view. Uh, as we can see here, the naming convention is the same all across, so we know which, um, which host we're referring to. Enable compliance alerts. We want to turn that on. We want to be notified if there's anything running um, anything that's going out of compliance, we want to be alerted on it. And finally, this run suitability check. So we're going to run this uh, so we can see if the system can handle the new load request by the provisioning request. Analyzing suitability. So you can see this fails with uh, a back-end warning. Um, so the front end is perfectly fine. The new load will uh, add that uh, particular uh, workload to to the existing workload and on the back end that it's fine this is a recommendation so this is a development box so it's just not being pushed that hard at the moment so I want to proceed on and I want to run that now show task details and it steps through the various um, tasks that it has to do creating the tin volume successfully and next up is create compli compliance alert policy for the storage group. That succeeded. Perfect. And if we go into RSG list, we can see it here. So com compliance is um, that's running in the background, so it just hasn't been a uh, updated as of yet. It's on the following SRP, SRP1, it's a diamond service level, uh, 20 capacity of two volumes and one masking view. And further to this, if you wanted to manage protection, you could do so here in this step. Um, the Okay, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today. I uh, hope you in, hope you found this useful. If you have any more requests, please let me know. Thanks.